Are you really liking this gambit, don't you? Well, let's move on. As in today's episode, we are going to look the second choice by the white camp, namely knight to c3. And I must admit that whenever my opponent plays this move, I feel like I am winning the game on the spot. Well, that much confident I am having in this line. And I hope that after watching this video, you will gain it too. Now here, if you check the database, by far, the most popular choice is D4. But I don't like that move because the position remains blocked. So in the true spirit of the elephant gambit, I am going to recommend you capture on E4. And after knight takes e4, here what I like about this line, you grab the center with f5. So white has basically three choices. And the first move, which is in fact a tricky one, white can play knight captures e5. And the point is, if you foolishly take this knight, then queen to h5 is a deadly reply. So all we need to do is just calm our nerves down and look out for better option to avoid this disaster. And accordingly, I think the best move fit in is queen to d4, attacking two spot. So white response is false. He has to give this check. And after g6, what else? Knight captures g6. Okay. First, we are going to capture this knight on e4 with a check. And after bishop to e2, I recommend this nice idea. First, you hit the queen. And after queen to h3, you just give white the whole rook by playing knight to c6. Many of you will say, hang on, but isn't that you giving up the rook for the two pieces? Well, yep, indeed. That is going to happen, but the big point is, after knight to d4, in fact, black has two threads and white cannot parry both of them. There is a mate as well as fork on c2 coming up. And after the best response, queen to d3, we have this nice sequence. Knight captures c2 check, king to d1, queen captures d3, bishop captures d3, and at the end, when we gobble up the rook in the corner, we have a very funny position on the board where both the knights are sitting in the corner and most likely they are going to disappear from the board very soon. But if you count the material after that, black is emerge with a clear piece up. So I think this model line completely refute knight captures e5. The second bad move I can play over here is, believe it or not, knight to g3, which doesn't look like that much problematic. But against all of this line, what black wants to do is, he wants to always push on with e4. And if knight retreat back, then after knight to f6, black already get an advantage as well as space. So nope, the only way to keep white in the game is, knight to e5, which has again the same idea, queen to h5 check. Well, you might think we need to stop it, right? Nope, guess what? We are going to allow it by playing bishop to e6. White has two major choices. And amongst them, if we continue with d4, then my recommendation is you play knight to d7 attacking on e5 and after knight takes and queen takes with the space and the leading development where black is aiming to castle long in this line black is always slightly better. So nope d4 is not a right option. If white has come this far then he has to go with queen to h5 check and after our g6 and knight captures g6 
I propose this nice exchange sack starting with bishop to f7. Okay, now we have some forcing moves. Queen captures f5, bishop captures g6, queen to e5 check, queen to e7, queen captures rook, and at the end, when we play knight to f6, <laughs> you can see I have highlighted by the arrows, what really black wants to do is, he wants to take this knight on d7, then he wants to castle, and then move the bishop somewhere, which at the end, grab the whole queen. Let me remind you, if that happened, white will lose his queen and the knight for two rooks, which is always good for the black camp. One of my recent game will give you a great idea what I'm talking about. Here, my opponent, who was 2200 rated player, continue with bishop to e2. I go for the plan which I have just mentioned, knight to d7. Now he play h4 and after I castle, his intention is to play h5. Okay, no worries, I simply drop my bishop back to f7. And now indeed there is a threat of bishop at 6. And funny enough, white doesn't have any resources to conquer that. For example, in the game, my opponent lash out with knight to f5, attacking my queen, but after queen to e5, his own knight get attack, and when he save it with knight to e3, what else? Bishop to f6. Well, by force, white is losing the queen, so my opponent tried the move knight to g4. But after just one move, queen to g5, white realized that he has a completely lost position. He took my rook, I recapture, and you should note that d4 doesn't work here because of queen to e5 check. So my opponent sadly take on h6. But after queen takes, as I have mentioned earlier, if you count the material, we have queen and knight against two rook and a pawn, which is in fact, with the accurate play, a completely winning advantage for the black camp. So I guess with this small line, you can understand now that knight to g3 can be comfortably met with bishop to e6. Okay, so let's look at the main move, knight to c3. And after that, yup, our move is very obvious, e4. And interestingly enough, I found a nasty trap if your opponent continue with knight to g1, which is in fact more common at the lower level. Let me show you how crafty this trick is. After knight to g1, I propose you continue with knight to f6 and when white plays bishop to c4 you just play knight to c6 so idea is very obvious that if white take out his knight on e2 then after knight to h5 white will lose the bishop pair so accordingly first white has to stop this by playing either the move a3 or a4 let's say a3 and when we play bishop to c5, white can take out his knight comfortably on the e2 square. So everything looks good, white is ready to castle, but nope, we have the another deadly trick occurs in this line with knight to g4 attacking on f2. So naturally, white is going to castle on the king side. Afterwards, Yup, if you have watched my Goring Gambit as well as Advanced Stafford Gambit lessons, then you can easily spot Black's idea, Queen to H4. <laughs> and I think after this, White is in a completely losing position. 
there is a double threat so white has to play h3 and after that black option is very simple you take on f2 if white try to save the queen then he will not forget this picture as checkmate in his whole life and i'm sure some of you already knew about it knight captures h3 double discover check king to h1 now the knight come back again with a double check and after king to g1 and the move queen to h1 white king has been murdered on his own bed so moving the queen is right out of the equation that means the only option left for the white is to take on f2 but after bishop takes f2 and king to h1 once again if you count the material this time around black is a clear exchange up so this is one of the wonderful tricky line exist if your opponent choose the move knight to g1 i think after e4 the most challenging response is knight to e5 again going for that queen h5 business but this time around black has equally a tricky reply queen to d4 and i can't tell you how many people has fallen for the queen to h5 check they think that black has made an error and now we get the rook in the corner but guess what we are going to play g6 and after knight to g6 white to his horror find out that black can actually take this knight as his rook is well protected the maximum white can do over here is queen check and after king to d8 yes indeed our king has been misplaced but the most important factor is we are peace up so watch out for this great trap which occurs frequently in the online chess so in the majority of the cases you are going to see the move knight to c4 and after this i am going to recommend you start with bishop to e6 attacking the knight and white has two choices and amongst them if you think that knight to e3 is the right one then you are absolutely wrong because no wonder this is a blunder by the white and let me show you what is the reason first of all black would love to play f4 here but the problem is white has this double check which ruin all the fun so my recommendation is first you play knight to c6 and now no matter whatever white plays we are going to lash out with f4 for example let's say white doesn't identify a threat and play a random move a3 then black can indeed play the move f4 and the big point is knight to g4 doesn't save anything as black has this nasty reply h5 and that poor knight is a complete goner so that is the big threat guys and accordingly if white wants to save the piece then he has to play d3 in this position but even after this white is completely losing so before i move on i like you to pause this video and find out a killer sequence that will completely destroy the white camp are you ready please pause the video if you need more time i am going to show you right now first black will play f4 knight to c4 what else now you play bishop to b4 threatening on c3 so again white response is force he has to play bishop to d2 and after that we have this nice sequence bishop takes c4 pawn takes c4 
e3 attacking the bishop pawn takes pawn takes and if the bishop moves then the c3 knight drops with a check so the only logical reply here is queen to e2 pinning down the e3 pawn but guess what black wins elegantly from here starting with queen check queen takes pawn takes on d2 with a check and after king takes we have this long castle where at the end of the whole sequence black clearly emerged with the whole bishop advantage so you can see how crafty these lines are and even though some of the best responses by white completely fails at many occasions. So it is pretty clear that white cannot play knight to e3 and he has to play the move d3. Well against this I am going to recommend more or less the same variation starting with bishop to b4, bishop to d2, bishop takes c4, pawn takes c4, and yes, indeed, this time we don't have the move e3, but after knight to f6, what black is aiming is he wants to enter into the end game where white's double pawn is a clear cut target. Here, white has tried few moves. For example, if he play a3, then bishop to c5 is a strong reply. In the case of knight to b5, we actually achieve what we want to do, namely exchange everything on d2 and then play knight to a6, whereupon this space and white's double pawn already gives black a nagging edge. So knight to b5 actually allow black what he wants to do. And apart from it, I think against all other moves, black plan of campaign more or less remains same. Now before we finish, I like to show you my high profile game against an IM in this line where he continue with bishop to e2. I simply continue with my peace development knight to c6 and after white castle i decided to put my rook on the d file okay there is a threat so my opponent plays bishop to e3 and naturally enough i unleash my attack of the rook by playing queen to e5 white plays queen to c1 but unfortunately that allows my knight intrusion on d4 square so I have a threat of bishop captures c3 and then knight captures e2. And indeed that knight is so strong that my opponent feels that he has to remove it immediately. And after my rook captures, white didn't like the idea of f4 coming up. So he responded with g3. But I think this is a great time inaccuracy as after the simple continuation, bishop capture c3, pawn capture c3, and the move rook to d6. White has an absolutely disgusting pawn structure on the queen side. And even though in the time trouble, I blew up the whole game, if you put this position in any chess engine, it will tell you that black is marginally better thanks to this weird pawn structure by the white camp. That's it guys. So now you are equipped with the same knowledge I am having in this line. And as I have shown in this video that after pawn takes, knight takes, f5, it doesn't matter however white plays. Not only black has some nasty tricks and traps exist in this line, but with the space in the center and the free piece development, this line always serves better for the black camp. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.